Today, we are back at the local Monday night car show in Lowville, Ohio to take a look at this 1924 Ford Model TT C cab truck. But before we do, welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. We do deep dives on all the cars featured, period correct ads, close-ups on the gauges, and we do tours of the car. If that sounds like a channel that interests you, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Before talking about the TT, a bit of background on the Model T. Produced from 1908 to 1927, it was the first mass-produced car that was affordable for the commoner. The Model T changed the world. Before the T, only the rich could afford cars. Ford would go on to sell 15 million Model Ts, a record that would stand for 45 years. Being dethroned by the Volkswagen Beetle in 1972, Ford offered the T in many different body styles. But to be fair, this isn't just a T, this is a TT. The TT version was essentially the more beefed up version of the Model T. For example, the wheelbase of a standard Model T was 100 inches. The wheelbase of the TT was 125 inches. The Model TT was introduced in 1917 and it would sell until 1928. It was designed by Henry Ford and his son, Edsel Ford. In the early days, 1917, the Model TT was sold as a chassis and the buyer had to supply the body. They only sold three units in 1917 at a price of $600, which would be equivalent to you spending $13,701.37. By 1924, which is our car, which is our truck, sorry, factory had bodies on offer. And those bodies were two-door pickup truck, panel truck, canopy express, box truck, stake bed. By 1926, the price dropped to $325, which would be equivalent to you spending $5,367.02. That's a really good example for good things come to those who wait. That price is less than half of what it was in 1917. Let's talk specs. Rides a wheelbase of 125 inches, 67 inches wide. Total 1924 TT production was 259,118. Moving on to the only engine on offer, it was a 177 cubic inch displacement, inline flathead four cylinder engine, 2.9 liters. It made between 20 and 22 horsepower at 1600 RPM. 83 foot-pounds of torque at 900 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 4 inches it had two valves per cylinder. Little bit of a side note, Model TTs often had an auxiliary gearbox like a Ruxtel or a Jumbo which gave the truck intermediate gears between low and high came in handy when climbing hills. Today, we are here with a 1924 Model TT C-Cab Ford, and this is Dan, he's the owner. He's gonna walk us through every single thing about this truck because it's unique and it's over 100, it's almost, almost 100 almost years 98. old. Yep, it's almost 100 years old and it operates totally different than anything you've ever seen before. So, the first thing with the Model T, people always ask me about, uh, what do the levers do? So. Yeah. throttle is up here on this side uh, and then this is your timing advance and retard you have to retard the timing all the way to start this truck and then once it starts you can pull it down to wherever that spot is where it sounds happy and then the pedals are totally different than anything beyond this so I'll show you so this right here is your brake pedal this truck, the only rear brakes that it has are right here on the handbrake. Otherwise, your brake is a drum inside the transmission. This is your reverse pedal, is how you back up. And then this is your clutch. Right now, with the handbrake forward, it's in high. Push it down to the floor, it's in low. About halfway up will put you in neutral. And then you have your headlight switch right here. You have one gauge in this truck, and that's your amp meter. And then your choke. 
And then everybody has always asked me, what's the other lever for us? That's another gear shift. So this truck is equipped with a Ruxtal two-speed rear end, which is this lever. Right now it's in high. All the way back would be low. And then this is a Warford auxiliary transmission. This has three speeds, under, direct, and over. So I'm in underdrive right now. That's neutral. That's direct. And up and over is overdrive. And then factory air conditioning, of course. And then here, under the seat, is your fuel tank. And the way to check the gas in this thing is you have this handy little stick right here. Take the cap off. Just put your stick in. And I have about seven gallons right now. Nice. Which should be enough to get me home. Want to see under the hood? Yeah. Um, so this was the clutch pedal. This is reverse. Yes. Center pedal's reverse. And this is for... because That's the brake. That's the brake. Because there's no gas pedal on this. Right. It's right here. It's a hand throttle, like yep. a tractor. Yes, sir. And then to back up, uh, one of the easier ways to do it is you pull the handbrake back just enough to where your brakes aren't dragging on the rear, but this pulls in a neutral. And now all you gotta do is step on this pedal. You don't have to use both feet to hold it. And uh, put the floor up for you. How oh, cool. This is how you adjust the uh, Talk about accessibility. The trans there's bands inside the transmission that from time to time need adjustment. So you take this cover off and you have access to the three bands right here. Now the low band is actually has a uh, piece that sticks out in the side here so you don't have to take it off because that's the one you're going to adjust the most. But the other two you have to access inside the transmission. There's a special band wrench you stick down inside there and a special nut with a washer with a stub that sticks up. You can give it a revolution and it'll lock back in place. This is the door handle for the doors. Notice there is no door handle on this side, just, just in the inside here. And notice these doors don't just open 90 degrees, they open all the way until they hit the fender. All right, getting inside. On to the button switches and knobs. Off to the left-hand side, that is the headlight switch. In the center, that is where the key goes to turn the battery on. There's only one gauge in this car, and that's for the amps. Right to the right of the amp gauge, that's the choke. So much easier getting in this side. So this is what it would look like behind the, behind the wheel. This is how much space you have. There's there's more space in this car than there is in a lot of 50s cars that I've been in. It's uh, you're just like, where should I put my feet? Because there's stuff going on everywhere down here. If you can see, that's pretty cool. So. On this side of the engine, you have your generator. This is a six volt negative ground system. This is a regular Model T generator. You have your carburetor down in here, which is an updraft on these. Now this truck's equipped with a distributor. This is made out of a uh, Volkswagen. I'm not exactly sure what year. Originally, these would have had a roller timer and a coil system. There's a coil box inside the cab, which is what these are a part of. And you would have had a timer up here, the set of points. And it would have wires running back to here and then down to the plugs. Model T didn't run Magneto? They did have a Magneto. Now it's been removed from this truck because I've removed the original ignition system. And that takes weight off the crankshaft on top of that. And then uh, over this side, you can see my horn. And then your steering column, and you can see where your linkage goes. Um, so here's your throttle, it goes through the center of the block, over to the other side, and then 
Here's the timing side. There's a rod that goes across the top, and if you watch the top of the distributor, you can actually see it advancing and retarding. And then obviously you just have your Ford blade fan. Now this truck does have a water pump. It's a little hard to see underneath here. Model T's did not have a water pump from the factory that was put on this truck at some time. It's thermo siphon. It's thermo siphon system. But keep a water pump on this truck. And then there's your starter. The truck does have electric start, which uh, I'll show you earlier. There's the button right there on the floor you hit with your heel. That's how you start it. Or you can start it on the crank. Okay, so we'll start this on the crank. First of all, turn your key over to battery and then make sure your handbrake's back. And I always put this auxiliary into neutral just for the sake of making sure I don't run myself over because without that, these really don't have a true neutral. So I'll give her one shot on the throttle, put it down a little bit the choke out like that turns like a kid this one's got a battery box six volt system that's the battery on to the pros and cons. On the positive side, there is nothing like it. It is a conversation piece. Good part support and club support despite it being almost 100 years old. Don't have to worry about theft because unless you've driven one, you won't know how. Gets up to 20 miles per gallon and it's rated to move one ton of freight. On the cons, it's geared super low so it's super slow. The pedals don't do what they normally do. Lots of maintenance that has to be done on the regular. Be sure to give us a like if you totally dig the content. Thank you so much again for letting me feature your truck and also thank you so much for explaining to all of us how it works. This is a, kind of a complex piece of machinery and I figured the gentleman that owns this truck could do a way better job of explaining it than I could. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support and until next time, toodaloo!